First, we have to enter a client name. Therefore, we enter the name of the doctor, the name of the patient, and the technician name. Next, we click on the first tool where we have the implant site. We choose anatomic wax up, go to implant based, screw retained, scan pre op model, yes, wax up, no, general design, optional, in wizard mode, and click next. Now we hold the control and click on the next implant sites. For the pontics, we click on pontic wax up, choose the coding material, pre up model, yes, wax up optional in wizard mode, and with a control button hold down, we click on all the other pontic sites. After that, we click save. When the file is saved, we click on design to be ready to import the scans. Here we can import scans. We look at the menu, first the preparation scan, the scan marker scan with the scan flags. After that, the pre-up scan. Now we have to position the model in the right orientation, so we're looking straight onto the occlusal and click Next. Here we can check if everything is aligned. In case the pre-up model is not aligned, we can realign everything. Now we have to choose a scan marker. In this case, they are open implants motor unit, we click on the large site, best fit matching, next, to go to the next site. <clears throat> Always click on the large site, best fit matching, and click next. Click on the large site, best fit matching, next. Now we have to define the emergence profile. In, in this case, we outline the outer crest of the emergence profile. We click on everything until the emergence profile is completely marked. We do this for every site. In this case, the emergence profile is fairly wide and the motor units are super gingerable, so we don't really need to define a real emergence profile. After everything is done, we're going to go to set up the teeth. Here, we're going to go and click on the, the chain mode. In the simple mode, you're going to move T's individually. To move T's all up, first we're going to click on move all simultaneously and we move everything up. Then we're going to go to the chain mode. Here we can move everything up as well. Click on the little disk, move the little disk so that the distal it's matching up with the teeth of the distal. Go to the other side, move the little disc so the distal wall of the tooth is matching up with the distal wall of the prea. Then we click on the last green dots to secure the position of the disc. Click on mirror all from the right side to the left so that all 
movement is mirrored and we grab number eight and move it out. All the T's are getting mirrored. Whatever we do on the left side is getting copied on the right side. When the T's are in position, in eight and nine's position, we secure the position and we can move now all the other T's. While they are secured, we're going to move the other ones and so on until everything is in position. You want to line it up as best as possible. It doesn't have to be 100%, but we don't want to have any major overlapping because then it might cause distortion in the adapt to pre-op process. When we hold down the control button, we can rotate. If we hold down the shift button, we can scale it a little bit. If you just click on the tools, we can move them into the correct position. After we're done, we click Next. In this step, we need to define the bottoms or the immersions profile. In this case, the motor units are super gingival, so we don't really need to define an immersions profile. In this case, we move the outline all the way to the motor unit. We click on the little green dot, not the seal, with holding the shift button. And while the shift button is hold, we can move all simultaneously. If we release the shift button, we can move them individually. We can move them up, down, to the side, Holding the shift button will move in pairs. Holding the control button will move all. Click next to go to individual free morphing. Nothing really needs to be done here unless you want to redesign the case from scratch. Nothing needs to be done here. In this step, we adapt to the pre-app. If you want to avoid that part of the tissue is getting copied, you select mark or exclude marked parts and you mark the parts with a paintbrush around the CJ, which parts of the pre-up should not be copied. If you want to erase one of the blue, um, blue markers, you hold the shift button and you can erase it. Releasing the shift button will mark it again. Soon as the area turns green, you can paint. If it turns red by holding the shift button, you can remove areas. Do this all the way with a large brush around the CJ to mark areas we don't want to copy. Going now to the distal and around to the lingual.
simple step takes a little bit more time, but in the end, you don't have to do so much cleanup and smoothing in the copied parts. It will just avoid copying the gingival parts, which you have to clean up, or which you had to clean up in a later step. Now, we're gonna lower the brush side, make it a little bit smaller, and go interproximal in the gingival, and mark the areas interproximal. Again, if you hold shift, you can erase areas. If you release shift, you can paint on the areas again that are not about to be copied. You also mark the areas on the lingual once everything is selected and you're happy with the selection. You click adapt and let the process run. You can stop the process anytime by clicking on stop if you feel that the teeth have morphed enough. Clicking stop will stop the morphing process. And if you click next, you can see as a result that all the teeth were copied exactly to the position and the form of the pre-up. With a smoothing tool, you can then clean up little areas that got copied. Even though it looks like the ginger was copied, it was actually not. What you can see here on the neck are uh, the neck of the original teeth that were placed. The gingival part of the pre up was not copied in this case. All we do is clean up some areas, some distortions that resulted from the copying process. or from the adapting process. The more you clean this up, the less chances you have that you might have some error messages later on. Happy with the result, you click next. You don't need to adapt anything. In this case, we don't have an antagonist. Now we need to define the gingival bottom, which means the cement gap and the actual inclination of the gingival. So we have a little bit of relief 
from the model to the gingerverse so we don't have a snug fit. You can define the bottom properties under bottom properties. I usually leave it at 0 0.03 millimeters we leave. We can increase it if you like. Now it's done. You click the first one because you want to define the entire gingival and you outline where you want to have the end of the line of your gingival. You can go into proximal to create a more realistic result later on. Usually they go really close to the teeth. If you haven't cleaned up the necks of the teeth in the previous step, you might feel or you might result that you have some distortion and the tissue get extended over these areas. Make the abutments visible so you can see where they are and you don't by accident cross them. Double click to close the line or double click on the last or the first point that you started with. Now you can move around some points and redefine the tissue just by marking them around. Clicking on the line will add a point, hovering over a dot and clicks the delete button will delete a point. In this case, we can go close to the teeth as possible because we want to achieve a convex area on the basal surface of the tissue. And therefore, we don't have to clean up so much later on. If you're happy with the design, click Apply. And the ginger oil is getting recalculated. Click Next for Freeform, the Small Area tool. Click on the papillas and all the areas interproximal of the gingival and bring it up to close the space in between the teeth. This will only bring up a small area. If you click on the large area, a larger area will be morphed. But this works pretty fast. I always also do it from the lingual and the buckle. You can also do it from the occlusal view and bring them in a little bit so you don't have to smooth so much because smoothing will reduce them a little bit again. Bring them up. In this area, you could go to free and add some material or you go to smooth smooth area. If you hold down the shift button, you will get a stronger smoothing tool. If you release this shift button, you will get a softer smoothing tool. If you're happy with the design, click next. And the area is getting merged now. That means the teeth and the gingival will become one. This might take a while depending to the size of the case. It will depend on the size of the gingival. It will depend on the power of your computer. So when it's done, it will give you an area and say success. You go to anatomic wax up, bring it visible to 100%, press next, and it's completely one mesh now. It's one area now. Now you can, by pressing S, S3, Sierra, you can make the scan invisible. Click the smoothing tool and smooth out the outer edges of the gingival from the 
basal area. Make sure you angle it in a position that you don't see the teeth, so you don't by accident smooth the, G, the CJ of the teeth. You can hold the shift button to make a flat smoothing by holding and releasing the shift button, you make a smaller or a less aggressive smoothing. You smoothing and flatten the areas to create a convex area. In these cases, we want to avoid a concave area. That means we don't, we want to avoid a rich lab area. So therefore, I or we can um, eliminate the outer border of the gingival part. You can also look at the model. You can bring it invisible, and you can add a little bit in the middle of the gingival and with a plus tool to create some tissue compression. Make sure where the areas of the tie bases are and where the holes are, you have enough or sufficient, sufficient material so you don't go beyond the minimum thickness. <clears throat> When you're happy with the design, click Next, and it will adapt the free-forming to the merged math. <clears throat> Here on the screw channel, you just click off, nothing else, click Next, and in this step, it will finalize the entire process and it's optimizing everything. It will also create the holes for the screw channels and this way you are done. If you click on free forming now, you could free form this device right now a little bit more. Or you save everything. And you could export it as a device for the milling. Click on it, save both files, so the scene is saved. Saving might take a while and it will exit the module. After this, you're done and you can mill the device.